The Boys on Amazon is quite different from the Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson comics. In general, Amazon's The Boys is a loose adaptation of the same named comics rather than a straight live action adaptation. Only the main concept, ideas, and characters of The Boys were copied exactly from the comics, with the rest subject to change. In today's video, we'll go through the changes that were made. The first item on our list is the social commentary of the comics has been improved. The Boys comics are a 2000s time capsule with both good and bad overtones. Their satire was based on contemporary issues, and they portrayed these issues as attacks on the superhero inclinations that were widespread in the new century. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does make the comics a product of the time period in which they were produced. While keeping the comics more broad social concerns, Amazon's The Boys brought the original material's political and cultural setting up to date. To mock how saturated the superhero movie genre has become, the film The Boys blends the jargon of today's most popular superhero movies, particularly those of the MCU with online culture. In addition, the television program continues to discuss current events, trends, and news. Moving on, the supers are more than simply radical reinterpretations of traditional superheroes. Ennis finds the most annoying aspect of such comics to be the fact that he uses the boys' book as a dumping ground for superhero tropes that he dislikes. This is the component that Ennis finds the most irritating, the supes, who are parodies of DC and Marvel characters are only in the game for one reason, so that the boys and the troops may yell at and beat the crap out of them. The supes are not genuine adversaries in the game, despite their mockery of well-known heroes, the series' superheroes are tough to overcome. Not only is it impossible to hurt a member of Payback or Blue Hawk, but these people also have a more human quality about them. Some of these superheroes are more appealing than others because they have more complicated personalities than their one-dimensional comic book equivalents. This is because they have greater emotional complexity. Following that, the boys have no superpowers. One of the most noticeable differences between the comics and the TV program is the boys do not have any special abilities in the comics, but they do on the television. Even before the current day show in the comics, the boys had begun utilizing Compound V as a weapon in their struggle with the Seven in order to level the playing field. The characters' potentially fatal abilities were depicted in the comics as a weapon that the heroes of the narrative may utilize for moral or immoral causes. In addition to the live-action boys, with the exception of Kimiko, being regular people who use disruptive tactics, superpowers are portrayed negatively. The boys are at a disadvantage, yet being weaker than others has helped them retain their humanity, with the exception of those men who utilize their power heroically. It is plausible to draw a parallel between Butcher and Huey's addiction to Temp V and the temptations that come with toxic masculinity. Following then, certain characters' origins and journeys have been significantly rewritten. It is inescapable that the original stories of the characters would be changed when adapting comic books into live-action films. This is not an exception in the case of the boys. Frenchie, for example, is not the ferocious warrior depicted in the comics, and Kimiko was not produced in a lab, but rather served as a child soldier. They took a different path through the plot, but they preserved the characters and dynamic created in the comics. A more major alteration may be noticed in Starlight, also known as Annie January, who functioned as little more than a love interest for Huey in the original comics. In the series, Annie started as a naive and idealistic superhero, but unlike her comic book counterpart, she asserted herself strongly, fought back, and eventually became a member of the boys. Annie's equivalent in the comics was more meek and passive-aggressive. Moving on, the show included a slew of completely reimagined characters. The Amazon series has a significant number of characters from the comics, albeit most of them are simply mentioned by name. A-Train and the Deep are two characters that were altered from their initial positions as a jock and a pragmatist into the roles of a troubled athlete and a desperate superstar. Mallory Stilwell and Vic the Veep all had gender reversals and new, more intensive narrative arcs in a similar vein. Black Noir, who is formerly a Homelander clone and a failsafe measure, has been transformed into his own person, which is without a doubt the most important alteration. Black Noir was basically Homelander's monstrous identity come to life in the comics. However, in the live-action adaptation, Black Noir, also known as Irving was a sorrowful suit with an odd but genuine relationship to Homelander. Next, the villainous superheroes aren't just punching bags, they're actual threats. Vought International was the ultimate adversary in the boys' comics, so much so that Homelander's failed superhuman revolt was actually Vought briefly losing control. Any colorful superheroes the boys encountered who were not connected to the Seven were only Vought's throwaway puppets whose sole goal was to illustrate how much more competent the boys were than the rivals. Vought remains an evil power in the Amazon series The Boys, but the other opposing Supremes are even more deadly and motivated. Stormfront and Soldier Boy, this season's recurrent adversaries, are outstanding examples of this trend. Their live-action portrayals of a Nazi and a bully are worlds away from their comic book counterparts, and this is just one of the many ways in which the program has evolved. Following that, the Homelander is now held responsible for his own villainy. The comic's most surprising revelation is that Homelander's evil clone, Black Noir, is to blame for his metamorphosis into a monster. In truth, Noir was responsible for half of the offenses that Homelander suspected 
act that he committed. Even though this is a magnificent and unexpected turn of events, Homelander has been clear to blame, and his actions and ego has been somewhat justified. In contrast, the episode dropped the noir twist and blamed Homelander for his metamorphosis into a monster squarely on him. As a result, he was a more terrible monster, since he had actively decided to be a horrible man. Although the live-action Homelander remains entitled, pampered, and driven by a yearning for love, he is significantly more skilled and proactive than his comic book counterpart at any point in time. The lads are also not as tough as they were in the comics. With the exception of Wee Huey, all of the boys in the comics are extensions of their boss, Butcher. Mother's Milk, Frenchie, and the female, for example, are all nonsense, edgy anti-heroes who kill first and ask questions afterwards, much like Butcher. They're all dressed in trench coats. This dynamic is not only eliminated in the series, but it is also broken down into its constituent elements. The boys in the show have their own set of aims and personalities that are distinct from Butcher, whom they just tolerate. Furthermore, they resist Butcher to the point of quitting him, in contrast to how they act in the comics, where they are dedicated to him. This shattered relationship is not only more realistic and interesting to see, but it also acts as a beautiful juxtaposition to the boys' unwavering dedication in the comics. Huey Campbell now has more agency and depth than ever before. In some ways, the boys' comics may be seen as a Huey's coming-of-age story. Having said that, Huey's advancement is based on defeating his emotionally abusive instructor, Butcher, rather than achieving his best self. Huey even thanks Butcher for turning him into a man, and the epilogue Dear Becky nonchalantly stresses how wrong yet acceptable this is. The live-action Huey was also taken under Butcher's wing, although he isn't very endearing. Huey grows through opposing Butcher and exceeding it, rather than just copying what Butcher says and does. Despite his admiration for Butcher, this Huey has more daring and free choice than his comic self. Finally, Billy Butcher isn't put on a pedestal. The worst aspect of the boys' comics is how it celebrates Butcher. Despite the fact that he spent 72 issues establishing that he was as bad, if not worse, than the soups he detested. At best, the comedians acknowledge that he was a harsh, deceptive, and self-righteous tyrant who was eventually proven accurate and necessary. In contrast, the series makes no effort to glorify him. Though Butcher's ruthlessness has its benefits, it is explicitly shown as a lonely and self-destructive path that he is aiming to lead others down. If Butcher was a symbol of toxic masculinity in the comics, his live-action equivalent is a fumbling anti-hero on the verge of becoming his own villain. That concludes our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, be sure to click the subscribe button. Thank you for your time.